Hey, what up everyone? I'm Sunny Cool, and this is Gems of War. And today I have your weekly preview for the week of September 11th, 2023. Uh, Wicked Witch of the West, new epic troop C Hag, get this troop with glory from the rewards tab of the shop. Guild War, help your guild win the war, don't forget to set your defenses and fight your daily battles. Tower of Doom, defeat dooms and gain points for your guild, build a team from a color purple, and search for the dooms. I have a video on that with three teams, high, mid, low, I'll link it at the end of this video. Team codes, chapters, no reason not to watch it, I'd really appreciate it, hit that like while you're at it, I'll put it in the bottom left hand corner at the end of this video. The Dread Captain's Chest, the campaign has started, new rewards every week, don't miss out. Week of Darkstone, all Darkstone troops gain 10% to skills. Uh, week of Mystics, all Mystics gain 10% to their skills. And bonus trait stones, use the Sea Hag and PvP to get a bonus trait stone. Alright, let's go check out that Soul Forge. Then we'll go do the Tower of Doom. Uh, then we'll do, we got Epic Trials, we got Underspire. Um, we got the campaign, we got the daily task thing, uh, extra experience to explain. Um, yeah, so we'll, yeah, we'll do everything. Soul Forge first, though. Let's see what's in here. What mythics are here, and what kind of order can we put them in? Here's Morthani's Darkness, probably the first time she has been available since she came into the game. It's a rather new mythic, so if you didn't get it, uh, you can get it now. Pisces, pretty good. Not the best, but not bad. Amarok, another like, you know. Eh, we got some of them um, above average mythics this week. Nothing too crazy. Uh, one thing that's notable, other than what I already mentioned with the um, Morthani's Darkness being the first time she's been available in the Soul Forge, most likely, is that um, we just had Aquaria... Like last week, and now here's Aquaticus. And one of the best teams to do with Aquaria is Aquaria and Aquaticus. So that's worth mentioning as well. I think the best troop here overall is probably Picea. 24, Blue, Red, Brown, Merlantis, Merfolk. Uh, destroy all green gems. Create blue gems equal to the number of green gems destroyed. There are two independent 30% chances to devour a random enemy. And it has tough scales, aquatic, celestial strength, nothing crazy on its traits, but just the fact that um, it's a really good mana generator and it has a chance at devouring two enemies is pretty cool. You don't want it to be your only thing on your team. Like I've seen some people where they make a team and their only way of killing is Picea. You really don't want that, but if it's a supplementary instant kill with supplementary mana generation, then it's pretty good. Like put it with a Triton and one other troop that can do something and then your hero. Uh, but never use it as your only way to kill. It's not like Zul'Goth where you can it can be your only option. You need something else to go along with it and uh, hopefully something that doesn't or something that uses green or blue would be uh preferable uh, maybe another merfolk i don't know picea is decent it's not a top 20 though so don't think that top 10s are what we recommend to craft in the soul forge top 20s are borderline um if you already have the top 10s and this is not either one of those so it might be a top 35 ish we got Morthani's Darkness. We got uh, probably Aquaticus would be second. 24, blue, green, yellow, Merlantis, Elemental Mystic. Deal light splash damage to three random enemies. Explode half the blue gems on the board. Submerge all allies with matching four or more gems. 25% spell armor. So that one is next. If you already have Picea. Then we have Morthani's Darkness, 22, red, purple, brown, Galvania, divine undead, steal life from four random enemies and summon Morthani's will. Create an uber doomskull, my turn begins. So it's pretty good, it's decent, I don't know. It, those three right there that I just did, Picea, Aquaticus, and Morthani's Darkness, you might have them in a, in a different order, but it really doesn't matter because none of them are top 20s. So if you want to argue about where stuff should go in the 30s, like, I don't know, you just like to argue then. But that would be my order as far as, like, how I would... Like, Picea, I feel, is the best. Aquaticus, I actually er, actually use. Morthani's Darkness just came out, so... Anyway. Amarok's the worst, though. 24 red, yellow, brown, broken spire, elemental beast. Deal damage to an enemy. There's a 10% chance to devour them. Boosted by red gems and burning enemies. If the enemy dies, create 9 red gems. Burn a stun a random enemy and magic for more gems. And it's got stone skin, so none of them are bad. 
we don't have any bad mythics in the Soul Forge. Um, they're just all kind of above average to like good. They're B tier to C C tier. They're in that area. All right, let's check out the legendaries. So so far, nothing you can't live without. We got Spring Imp. We got Glitter Claw. We got Willow. And Pyrophemus. So none of these are ones you can't live without either. So the Soul Forge just kind of uh, save up and um, have patience. So all of these are... Like, the Legends are definitely worse than the Mythics. They're not great. They're all average to below average. Uh, Pyrophemus is okay. But yeah, they're not really worth going over. None of these really do anything. He's not great. He's just okay. Willow, not great. Just okay. And Glitter Claw, just okay. Spring Imp, just okay. Nothing there is great. So, same. The Mythics are a little bit better. Like, Pisea has its uses. Aquaticus has its uses. Morthani's Darkness is a new Mythic. Um, even Amarok is above average and okay. Like, the Legendaries are all average to below average nothing great there at all i'd rather see a craft picea than um one of those legendaries uh, as far as weapons go um is there anything screaming tome you could maybe use that this week for some stuff it's a dark stone week i thought the jar of eyes was going to be here but i guess not Guess that's the all-seeing eye weapon. So let's ch uh, check it out on Tuesday. I think it'll be here Tuesday. Uh, the Jar of Eyes weapon. So you might as well get it while you're doing the event. But if you're not going to go, if you're going to try to do the event for free and you don't have the weapon yet, you could get it here also. The Jar of Eyes is pretty good. But yeah, the Soul Forge kind of ho-hum. Picea was the best thing. Um, followed by Aquaticus and Morthani's Darkness. Nothing else really jumped out at me. Yep, that's the Soul Forge. Let's go check out the Tower of Doom. All right, so Tower of Doom. We have a purple Tower of Doom. So you got to use purple troops. And we have a, a, a new ring, the Doomed Ring. So you're going to want to use the Doomed Ring. So we already know part of your team is going to involve this ring. You have to buy up to Tier 4. reason you have to do that is because right here it says earns times 2 score in this event only. So you, if you want double your score, then use the ring. They're not really, they're not forcing you. Like it's not impot. They don't put the ring on your team and and make you use it. But it's up to you to use it to get double the score. Um, of course, you don't have to do anything. Just like with Guild Wars, you don't have to use the color of the day if you don't want to. But you should because you'll get way higher score. So put the Doomed Ring on your team and then make. Don't use it because it's not great. Give two magic to all allies, plus one per tempering level. Give 41 armor to purple allies. If the enemy has a doom, gain 10 attack. I don't even think there's any purple um, troops that gain any boost off of armor. So it's not worth casting or anything. Um, so yeah, just don't cast it. Put it on the end of your team or use it as a, as a shield, a meat shield. And get two times score. As far as how to play this, you'll have a scout. Your guild has the same room. Every every room costs a sigil, right? So I have 14 sigils right there. So if I do room 2, it's going to cost 1. I'll have 13. If I do room 3, it's going to cost 1. I'll have 12. If I do 4, it's going to cost 1. I'll have 11. And etc, etc. So the scout will tell you which rooms are worth hitting, worth using your sigils on. You don't want to go to a room that has an armor scroll because it's not worth it. You're going to waste a sigil. And the whole guild will waste a sigil if you don't have a scout. So your scout will go through every single room. They'll do all of them. And they'll write it down somewhere. Whether it's your guild chat or Terran's world or an external chat or something. There will be a place for you to... you got to ask your guild now. Like, hey, where are we doing this? They'll tell you. You'll go there. You'll see which rooms to hit on which floors. So maybe floor four is room two and that's the unlock. And that's all you have to hit. And then you go to the boss. And you don't touch room four, three, or five. And then like maybe room uh, floor five is uh, two's unlock and five is luck. You want to take the luck, you want to take the unlock, and you skip the other two rooms, and then you go to the doom. Um, so yeah, definitely hit lux, unlocks, heroisms, fireballs, haste is optional, depending, I mean, we have more rewards now, I think haste is more, uh, 
Like, it used to be optional, but it might be something you need to do now to get all the way to stage 16. But the ones you want to hit are Luck, Unlock, Heroism, Fireball, and Haste. The ones that are optional that I never hit are, like, uh, Power and Magic. And then the ones that you should never, ever hit are Attack, Armor, and Life. So, if you want to follow my advice, just hit the Lucks, the Unlocks, the Heroisms, the Fireballs, and decide if you want to hit the Haste on your own. But I, mean, I, said, I never hit Magic, I never hit Power, I never hit Armor, I never hit Life, I never hit Attack. I skip all of those, they cost sigils, and they're not worth it. The way this mode works... You don't get enough stats, even if you hit power. So, you don't. there's no reason for anybody to hit the armor uh, scroll when you're only going to get 7 out of 8 and not even plus 1 armor. And then everybody has to hit it for you to get... And then you don't even get much of a benefit from getting an extra armor. So, the stats don't work the way you think they do. And just double... Take another look here if you think they do. Even if you get that magic scroll, it's just going to say 1 out of 7 and still say plus 6. So you better hope every single other person in your guild is getting that magic scroll too. And wasting sigils on it. Because uh, you're not getting anything when you take it. Because it's only going from 0 out of 6 to 1 out of 6. It's not giving you an extra magic stat yet. Until more, 5 other people do it too. And then there's diminishing returns the higher you go. It's going to take 7, 8, 9, 10 uh, scrolls to get to that next stat. So just let the, the scouts get the stats, let them get the powers, let them get the magics, let them do that. They'll get the easy to get, they'll get like the pity keys of the magic stat. And then the, you know how the further you go with the pity keys, the less you get? It takes longer and longer and longer to get a pity key. It's the same thing with the magic stat. So just let the scouts get the easy to get magic stats, and then don't worry about it after that. Don't waste your sigils on magic scrolls or power scrolls. Alright, so yeah, that's Tower of Doom. Wherever your guild tells you to go to look up what rooms to hit, it's the same. Your guild mate has the same tower as you, but me, I don't have the same tower as you unless you're in my guild. Um, so yeah, that's Tower of Doom and Soul Forge. What should we do next? Let's do the uh, Glory Shop. Get your Spoils of War. Got the Sea Hag. It is 13 Purple, Brown, Dark Stone, Merfolk, Mystic. Drain 7 mana from an enemy, then convert all blue gems into cursed gems. Reduce damage from spells by 25%. Have enemy gem masteries, and all enemies lose 2 random skill points. It's not great. It's decent. It's not the worst glory shop troop ever. It is our shiny troop, though, so that's kind of annoying, because now we have a, a not-so-great shiny troop. Um, so don't open your shiny keys this week, and... Um, you know, if you need a conversion, like a blue into into brown conversion, and you need a curse option, like super early in the game, this might be decent for you. But for everybody else, there's other options, and we probably will never use this. If it was empowered, it would be good. It's not, so it's not. It's just okay. But we get the arcane skull trait stones, which is purple and brown. So the more you buy, the more you get here. Um, you get two per. So if as you're getting her to Mythic, you're going to get a certain amount. Or if you just need, you know you need purple and brown trade stones, go as far as you as you can afford. And uh, go trade a bunch of purple and brown troops. Let's go check that out. Let's see what you can fully trade. If you get it in the glory shop. Get that trade stone. Arc Proxy Avendra. Conjure an uber doomstorm when an enemy dies. Pretty nice. Mmm... I think Phoenix has uh, that Phoenix's Blessing, Bless, and Enchant, a random ally when I match four or more gems. Obsidious has Earthquakes, done all enemies on four or five gem match. I think even Medusa has something. Stone Curse, Curse and Stun, a random enemy and matching four or more gems. Ferris Ra has the 150% bonus souls from battle. It's the highest in the game. We have Ulor, Ancient Chill, Freeze and Fairy Fire, Random Enemy, and Matching Blue Gems. Does Will Anisha have something? Nah. Yasmin's Chosen has Wild Vines, Entangle a Random Enemy, and Matching Green. Chernabog has that Dust Plume, so if you're um, interested in the Kalsadani team, which is really good for brown and yellow restrictions, especially this would involve a brown restriction because Chernabog can't be used during yellow, um, this, is, this just makes that team even stronger and even more loopy. And uh, having it fully traded is how you make it have its Dust Storm and have all that good loopiness. 
Glaceon has that ice armor, 65% skull reduction. Uh, Magnus has experiment, inflict a random status effect on four or five gem matches. Matron Dra Dragatani has the second highest spell damage redu reduction in the game. Used to be the highest. Then you have Daughter of Ice, Empowered Converter, Red Gems to Blue with an Ice Storm on it. Drake Rider's kind of notable. It has that 100% chance to summon a Drake on death, so it's pretty tanky. Like uh, Ogress, who has the 100% chance at the gate when it dies. This thing has 100% chance at a uh, Drake when it dies. So it's pretty much a two troops in one. And that's about it. So, yeah. Get your... Uh... Get your Drake Rider, get your Glaceon, get your Chernabog, um, get your Magnus maybe, your Matron Dragatani, get your Daughter of Ice, and then check out your Mythics up here and see if you can uh, do those too. You got Ferris Ra, you got Obsidious, you got Phoenix, you got uh, Arc Proxy Avendra, so let's see what you can do and do it if you can. That Trait Stone. It's in the Glory Shop right now just for glory. It's, you know, you should have a lot of glory. All right, let's do the event key drop table. It's Darkstone. Let's go check it out. What can you get from event keys this week? Let's go to base rarity. We'll go to Darkstone. We'll do uh, show all. All right, so we got Consort of Darkness, Mother of Darkness, and the Possessed King as our mythics. The best one there is most likely the Possessed King these days. Used to be the Mother of Darkness was pretty good, but that was before Night Spider got nerfed. Uh, its purple gems got turned into web gems, and now you're going to be uh, getting webbed and backfired on that. So it's not as good, not as... Uh, it used to be one of the best PvP teams in the entire game, and now it's just not used anymore. So she kind of fell fell off quite a bit. Uh, I think the Possessed King kind of took over as the best mythic of Darkstone at this point. But the Possessed King is not a top 20 mythic. It's borderline, but still not worth the event keys, I don't think. Even though these two are all pretty good. Uh, I don't like Consort of Darkness, but he's also not terrible. So if you were going to throw event keys, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if you got a mythic. Because none of them are terrible. Um, but yeah, Legendaries, your consolation prize would be like Magnus. He hits all enemies. He has that experiment, which is kind of fun. Scion, kind of an annoying troop for enemies to face. Um, yeah, it's real top heavy, except for Thrall is down here too. So if you don't have Thrall, let's say you're a beginner and you have 50 event keys and you don't have Thrall yet somehow, that would be a, a situation to throw event keys this week. Or you're a high-level player that uh, needs that mythic to get that magic stat, then that would be the other situation to throw event keys this week. But if you're not 100% getting a, a, a stat if you get a mythic, then don't do it. And if you're not a low-level player without Thrall, don't do it. So most people should not throw event keys this week. I don't care about the magic stat unless you can immediately get it by getting the mythic. Because otherwise, there's plenty of other mythics you should save your event keys for, like Iron Hulk, like High King Iron Gut, like Arachnian Weaver. There's so many things that you should not waste them on just uh, not even getting your magic stat. If it's going to get it to if you're immediately going to get it, that's fine. But if it just makes it closer and now you got to get like another pet or two and then you got to get a uh, class to 100 and then you got to get uh, something else, like why do this now? You could do some other Magic Kingdom and, and get it immediately if you just wait another week or two. What if another Magic Kingdom pops up next week and you could have got it sooner and faster and easier by saving your event keys and throwing them at that one? You're going to do it this week, Get maybe get one of these, maybe not. And then if you can't get the stat immediately and you still have to get some pets and some class to 100 and something else just to get your stat. I'm just, uh, for example, I don't know if that's the, the way it goes, but don't do it then. Make sure you're going to get something out of it. Don't throw all your vent keys, get a mythic, and then not get a stat. And just be like, oh, I'll get it sometime in the future. Because you might be able to get it next week or the next week if you just have patience and wait. And then you throw all your vent keys at a different kingdom that gives you a magic stat, but you can get it immediately instead of waiting and just randomly throwing your keys just because somebody said you can get a magic stat. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, event key drop table. Let's go see. I know that's not as fun. Sometimes the things I say aren't as fun as wasting all your keys, but you'll you'll thank me in the long run, basically. Um, 
what is going on this week? So right now you got your campaign, you got your daily task chore thing with your exp XP bonus thing. Um, we got the Tower of Doom. Go check on your scout, or if you're a scout, make sure you report every single room and only hit the correct rooms. Uh, Tuesday we have what is that? Oh yeah, all seeing eye. Tuesday we have all seeing eye. So I will have a video for that at the at reset uh, faction video. Um, do I have it on 500? Yes, so I will have the pure faction video linked at the end of that video tomorrow uh, at reset, most likely. Uh, Wednesday we have shrunken head there, the shrunk little shrunken head guy from Darkstone. It's another pet for a Magic Kingdom, so there you go. If you need more copies of that. Thursday, we have Plague Lord. It's a decent class. It has a good class weapon. Uh, it has rock solid. Um, it has a 50% start. It's decent. It's like a mid-tier class. Um, and then this weekend, we have Arena. They're presenting writs to you. They're presenting a chance for you to practice. I know most people, it's going to go in one ear and out the other. But they are presenting writs to you. And they are presenting a good chance at practicing. Uh, so... If you're not doing so great at the Epic Trials, if you don't have a Magic Kingdom to 20 yet, or 2, then uh, maybe that's your problem. You should do Arena more often. But I get it. I get it. I always say I get it. I understand. It's not good loot for uh, the time invested. But yeah, that's what's going on this week. Uh, let's go check out... Um, uh, Guild Wars is going on too, by the way. So make sure you set your defense, set your uh, Sentinels, and... Um, just use the color of the day. I have a video uh, with all my teams on it. You, you can just type in. Uh, if you go to my channel and you scroll all the way to the right, like it's, it'll say like playlists, videos, about. I think there's a one that says search, and it's like all the way to the right. So you can go to my channel. You can go to search all the way to the right. Click on that, and then type in Guild Wars, all teams or all colors, and you should get it. If you can't find that search bar on my channel, then just type Gems of War, Cine Cool, Guild Wars in the uh, YouTube search bar, and you should get it. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be um, hopefully doing something special this week with, like, I'm hoping to get downtown's teams and try them out, but we'll see. We might, we may or may not do something special with Guild Wars this week. Remember, you can always use your Warband teams for your Defend teams. It's an easy way to just plug them in and get your your all your points for your Defend teams. Or just over time copy somebody's team that beats you that's the best way to upgrade your your defend teams i know a lot of people care about their guild wars defend teams which uh i probably need to care a little bit more about it myself it's not the most important thing ever if you do awesome on offense people will appreciate you more than if you do awesome on defense uh, uh, offense is the best defense in this game man i'm making this freaking long um let's go to underspire i already have a team ready to go we got Screaming Tome, Thrall, Mother of Darkness, the Possessed King. Show you the team code. Right there. I think uh, the Mother of Darkness, especially early, will be pretty quick. And Thrall is one of the best. Like, let's just look at everything in case. Because I know I don't do lots of. I might. I'm considering making a, this a video of its own. Um, but yeah, Magnus would be pretty good for some people out there if you don't have, uh, Mother of Darkness or the Possessed King. Um, even just the All-Seeing Eye troops are pretty good together and are easy to get. Thrall is the best mana generator, so you're probably going to have him on your team. And yeah, you have access to Black Manacles, too, as a low-level player, so some sort of Black Manacles Thrall team with a couple All-Seeing Eye troops would probably work just fine. And then if you're mid-level, if you use Magnus, and, and I don't know, Magnus instead of Black Manacles with, like, maybe Jar of Eyes and something else. But if you're high-level and you have access to everything, this is what I'm doing here. And I'm thinking about putting out a video for, for the Underspire and also the Epic Trials. Uh, I just want to um, maybe get up my Tome or Thrall. Thrall's fine, too. Lots of mana right there. Bang. Get two kills. Make a bunch of purple. You can probably finish them with this early. Later on, the deal is you're going to be uh, doing true damage. 
and getting kills and making a bunch of purple, getting Thrall back up, casting Thrall, getting Mother of Darkness, bang, bang. You just keep going back and forth with the uh, top three troops. You got the Possessed King there just for a little bit of extra mana. You're probably going to stop casting the Possessed King later. Um, but yeah, that's how it's going to go most of the time. You're either going to match purple, get up Thrall, cast it, or if there's no purple to match, you're going to match yellow or green. Get this up, cast this. It makes blue and purple for each Darkstone ally. We are Plague Lord class, so we are Darkstone ally. So we'll make the max uh, purple and blue and damage. And then that'll get up Mother of Darkness. We cast it, get two kills, make a bunch of purple, uh, which will get back up Thrall or Possess King to finish them off. And if it gets up Thrall, you just cast Thrall again, which will get up Mother of Darkness again. She can finish off the bottom two or the last one or whatever. I think this will work pretty good for quite a while. Oh, uh, we got Epic Trials. Let's go. We'll do the campaign last. And the XP bonus thing. I should have already talked about that, probably. But let's do Epic Trials. So, it started me here. I already had these done, so I didn't get as much practice. But I went with Blind Guardian, Anointed One, Magnus, and Dark Master. So remember, you just got to look at everything every troop does. Don't just look at their spell. Uh, we got Blind Guardian here. It uh, gains bonus purple mana from purple gem matches matches it summons a dark storm at the start of battle it drains up to 10 mana from an enemy explode one gem for each mana drained now one thing i did notice was this is stealthy this is stealthy the only one you're going to be able to drain is like dimetraxia because this one is stealthy too one of them can't be drained too huh right here this one can't even be drained even if it wasn't stealthy so, we got three stealthy troops, and we got Dime Traxia. So, you're going to have to uh, drain Dime Traxia if you're going to even cast the Blind Guardian. Anointed One gains attack and life and transforms all green gems to red to boost the effect. Starts at 50% mana. It's not a tank, really, but it could do a lot of damage, and it could boost its life up to become a tank, maybe. So, I like to have it in second slot. That way, it gives it a chance to build up a little bit. We'll let the Blind Guardian die. But also be draining and exploding. And then if it dies, we have the Anointed One who's been building its attack and life. Um, then we have Magnus in the most protected slot because it does damage to all enemies. And then it uh, has Inflict a random status effect on 4 or 5 gym matches. That could be a death mark. That could be a fairy fire. That could be something good. Um, and it does um, damage boosted by diseased and poisoned enemies. And then it diseases and poisons all enemies. Dark Master is our kind of like you can't lose, so might as well put him in last slot, and um, he summons the Thrall. So don't even cast him until you need something to be summoned in. So let's go do a battle. As far as the enemies go, you can't really target any of them, but you have Magnus, so you can cast Magnus and hit all of them. Um, once you take out Dimetraxia trying to decide which one's the most annoying they're all about the same she's probably one of the most annoying she might inflict some crazy the least annoying might be her because she doesn't do anything too crazy but we'll see i don't know she might hit really hard or something we got green extra turn remember just don't let them take skulls we got brown and red. Get the most out of every turn. Don't take the blue that down there that they're suggesting. Take this. Uh, I guess you could, actually, because it'll we'll get the brown and the red, too. Make sure... Man, they got skulls. So they probably set that up so they would get uh, skulls. Can't always trust the enemy in their stupid blinky move, because... Sometimes they're hoping you take it. Because they know they'll get skulls or something. Um... Okay, I think we're safe to cast Magnus pretty soon. Nope, we gotta take the skulls first. And let us cast Magnus, right? Alright, so if we can get him back up quickly, he will do more damage. Uh, we got this. Um, We don't want to cast this guy until we lose a troop. So we'll cast this. Uh, and it has to get cast on Dimetraxia. And Dimetraxia only has three mana. So maybe we just match uh, brown or purple at the moment. 
or red, I guess, but that would give him skull, so we don't want to do that. Let's do this. All right, we got him, but we got to take the skulls first. All right, now we cast him. Pretty good damage there. Um, Dimetraxia has five mana now. I'm kind of waiting for it to get more. If I take that, they get an extra turn with skulls on it. So let's do this instead. Let's take the skulls now. Get a kill. More skulls. Uh, he's got nine. That's about as much as we're going to get, probably. So let's go ahead and cast this on that. Drain all of its mana. Get an explosion. Um, we don't really have alignment for uh, Buddy there. So, but I think I might cast it anyway. As long as it doesn't give them an extra turn, why not? Build up our dude. Uh, let's see. We need purple. We need brown. Don't have it. Skulls. Brown. Oh, gave him skulls. Okay, so do I... Uh, maybe I don't want to cast Thrall. Maybe I don't want to bring in Thrall right away. Because our dude has 284 attack. So, I think I made the right choice here. See? Instead of casting that guy and bringing in Thrall. Let's go ahead and take these skulls. Get a kill. I'm just going to wait until I have to cast that. So I gave him enough buffer zone to gain enough attack and life. To now be a very useful part of our team. So I'm going to go ahead and use them. I'm not going to immediately cast and, and get Thrall. And maybe once he gets uh, hit a couple times, that'll be a good time to bring in Thrall. Or if you start, like, somebody gets close to dying here, potentially. But right now, I'm feeling fine with leaving him, leaving my team and with three people on it. We just gained more life and got more attack right there. Um, Take that. Let's do Magnus. Get a kill. Ooh, just give me the skulls, baby. Come on. Just give me the skulls. One, two, three. That won't work. Um, Purple and brown. Let's just go, like, right here. Of course. Oh, yeah. That's a good choice. So, I could have had four troops there at the end. But I didn't want to because uh, I wanted that attack. I wanted that troop to be there in first slot. Taking skulls. So hey, little tip from Cool. Um, so yeah, that's Epic Trials. That's Under Spire. Let's check out the campaign. Uh, we had a ship, the Infernal Voyager. Usually ships and fire didn't go together very well, but when you're in the Blighted Lands, your options are limited. The, dark, the stars led us towards Darkstone. So our tasks are Slayer, kill enemies in any battle except training. Purple Slayer, kill purple enemies in any battle except for training. And match purple gems in any battle except training. It's pretty easy. Nothing that you have to... I mean, it's Guild Wars this week, so make sure you get it done before you start your Guild Wars battle. So you can have as much stats as possible. But um, it's nothing that you really have to... And it's magic, too. So I just make sure you got it done by Tuesday when you start your Guild Wars battles. Uh, what are we getting, though? Some poly. Some books. Nothing too special. A bunch of keys for the paid side. Some more copies of poly. Then a magic stat. Uh, last thing here. We got this XP bonus. So hopefully you've been saving these up. Because now's a good time to use them. Why? Because if you win Guild Wars, you get extra experience. If you check out, uh, if I check my collected, and I go down. Um, daily Guild Wars victory. Your guild won the day yesterday, so you have some guild seals along with a 100% XP bonus. Runs for 24 hours from when this mail was sent. So normally I get something like 72 xp per kill or per battle which is pretty low because i'm vip zero so most people probably get more than that even but let's check it out let's run a quick battle see how much i'm getting right now normally a regular 
battle, I get like 72, I think. I know it's the lowest in the game. Maybe it's, unless you have like zero VIP and no lucky pet. Could be a slightly lower. But I have one of the lowest in the game. And now I have 110. So it went up by 100%, I guess. Is that double? So that means I have, what, 55 usually? So I don't know if it exactly doubled, because I swear I have like 72 without that bonus. But now the cool thing is, if I use my XP bonus in the mail, it'll double that to 220. So something where I'm normally getting around 70 experience per battle, I'm going to get 220 experience per battle. And you can't do this any other week. Guild Wars week, when you win Guild Wars, is the only time you're going to be able to get that much experience. Which is pretty much triple, triple experience. 70 times 3 is 200 and, uh, you know? So, it's like triple experience right now if you do it right, if your guild wins the day. I'm not going to go use my XP bonus, but what you would do is just go to the mail... And just collect one of these right here. And then you'll have 15 minutes to get double experience. And you saw with my extra experience from uh, Guild Wars Victory, I'm already getting extra experience. So I'm going to end up tripling my experience this week. Um, so yeah, Guild Wars Week is definitely the best week to use that XP bonus. Save them up in the mail. You can't save them up forever, though. They only last for seven days, so you're not always going to do this. But the week before Guild Wars is when you're going to save them up. The week before Vault Event is probably when you're going to save them up. Because it's more, it's easier to do this when it's a Guild Wars week or a Vault Event week. When we're already, like, it's more incentive to uh, to actually do the XP bonus for 15 minutes. Every other week, you're just going to go ahead and use them immediately and get them out of the way. But, yeah. Triple the experience this week. Like, share, subscribe. Consider joining. It helps a lot to hear. Get about channel comment below.